Welcome back. Um, let's talk about the tippy canoe sequence. So we talked about the sock sequence. Um, so let's get into the tippy canoe sequence. And this is uh, between the tippy canoe sequence and the taconic orogeny that we'll talk about next section. This kind of represents generally what occurred during the early part of the Paleozoic era and then the Cassian, Absaroka, and a number of other mountain building events represent more so what happened in the latter parts of the Paleozoic era. But that's neither here nor there. So in any case, we'll start off the Tippy Canoe, mostly exposed craton, weathering and erosion occurring, transgressive, oceans come in, sediment being deposited, and so we get transgression, and then we get regression as we get towards the end of the Tippy Canoe, which the uh, uh, North America again exposed. So let's go ahead and jump into this, shall we? So again, what it kind of looks like at the the height of the of this uh, tippy canoe sequence is is what we see here. So we really see only a little bit of the Precambrian shield left uh, unexposed. Um, so this is kind of the extent uh, to which what we have the Canadian Shield now, everything else buried in sediment. Now the platform, still part of the craton, but as far as the the shield is concerned, you know, we really only have these now because of of this here. But again, everything else is being covered in sediment that would eventually turn into sedimentary rock, um, intruded with igneous uh, material, altered metamorphically. So in any case, um, uh, we have now this transgressive regressive tippy canoe sequence. The initial rock that was uh, laid down, well, the initial sediment that would eventually become that initial rock to mark the tippy canoe sequence is the St. Peter sandstone, which is an almost pure quartz sandstone, which is actually used now in manufacturing glass. Glass is actually made out of sand. That's how they make glass and you know, they, they melt sand and do other stuff to it um but yeah that's how you know, like glass for your window yeah that's how it's made so here is uh here's a picture of the saint peter sandstone in fact this is an old quarry an old mine um so very quartz rich you can see it's almost white in color a lot of that sediment again coming from the exposed craton at the end of the sock sequence all that sediment getting dumped into uh, the kind of the shallows of the ocean and, and the movement thereof an additional deposition into the tippy canoe. So we have again the the craton being covered, um, Laurentia being covered during this transgressive event. So we have this older um, uh, uh, sock sequence sedimentary rock and now we get this new sequence on top. Again, we have um, an unconformity because we had sock sequence deposition and then stop of deposition and then that material weathered and eroded and the new sediment la sedimentary layers that would eventually become sedimentary rocks on top. So we have a gap in time there, some missing information. So that is an unconformity. Anybody remember what type of unconformity that is? If you said disconformity, then you'd be right. If you didn't say anything, that's okay. It's been a while since we talked about that. So disconformity is missing information between two sedimentary rock layers. Also during this um, tippy canoe sequence, we get a number of basins forming. Um, for example, the, the Michigan Basin. Um, because we have the ocean coming in, we get limestone being deposited and we we have oceans and shallows of the oceans and we have reefs being developed like when we think of reef like a coral reef yeah those existed uh, uh you know in what is now north america because again remember laurentia was kind of right along the equator around this point right along the tropics so if it's covered in water and, and reefs can begin to form as those type of things evolved during this time yeah we had oceanic reefs in parts of north america including Michigan. Um, so we get reefs starting to be developed and, and what these reefs ended up doing as the regressive event began to occur is trapping some of that um, uh, ocean water. And as that water evaporated away, you get e deposits. This, that's what an evaporate deposit is. A deposit of material that was created because of evaporation. So seawater, whenever it evaporates, when the water 
evaporates away, at least behind the salt. So we get a lot of salt deposits uh, and other deposits in Michigan and a number of other places. There's the Appalachian Basin, the Ohio Basin, and of course the Michigan Basin. Michigan Basin being the biggest. So again, we're in North, the North America is still pretty much right here along the uh, equator. So we get the uh, the Michigan Basin here with a lot of these evaporites so salt deposits are very common around the um, around the Great Lakes uh, in fact where I'm from in, in Cleveland there's a lot of uh, salt mines right around the lake because at this time um, of what was going on uh, yeah, this is kind of a cross-section of Michigan uh, at the time and and the series of of sedimentary rocks the limestones and some of the other evaporates that that uh, were there and laid down so anyway, so now so this this is, you know, there's a lot going on, so I'm just kind of giving you the basics, you know. So the tippet canoe, again, oceans came in, oceans left, regressions. Um, so again, we're exposing the, the land, so we're going to get some more weathering and erosion to occur, so another unconformity to happen. Um, and so as we're kind of, we're doing so, as we're coming out of it, again, Again, so these first two, uh, sorry, I was trying to collect my thoughts here. So we have the sock and tippy canoe, transgression, regression, transgression, regression. So we get this material deposited. We've got sediment deposited, eventually becomes sedimentary rock. Now, again, these are still tens of millions of years that are occurring here, right? So over that time, sedimentary rock, as the sediment begins to form, uh, build up, sedimentary rock is created with a little bit of heat and pressure of the of the overlying um of the overlying materials uh, but you can see here here's a, a good indication of the here's Michigan and the Michigan basin because of the the way the reefs formed it almost formed like this bowl and trapping some of this ocean water so as the ocean regressed and this ocean, salty ocean water was trapped the water part evaporated away salt gypsum another thing that was deposited there um, creates now mineral deposits that that we we utilize so in any case what about in Arizona? What was going on during the Tippecanoe sequence? Well, again, oceans coming in, depositing more material, um, you know, giving more layers to to Arizona, including what we see in in the Grand Canyon. Sorry, technical difficulties. So again, Arizona being covered, being exposed, sediment being deposited, as mentioned. And this is what's adding sedimentary sediment layers to Arizona eventually becoming sedimentary rock over these millions of year periods as we're trend as we're going through the Paleozoic era and um, again we're seeing those in the Grand Canyon so initially we looked at the the sock sequence and what was deposited and then now here we have uh, what the sequence of rocks that was deposited in the tippy canoe Remember, in between these, we have unconformities because once the sea levels dropped, whatever was exposed, there was some weathering and erosion that occurred or and or just non-deposition, so nothing was being deposited. And once the seas came in again and deposited a new material, there's a gap in time. So that's why you're getting unconformities between all of these sequences. Sock, unconformity. Tippet canoe, unconformity. Cascassia, unconformity. Absaroka, etc., etc. Okay, so let's uh, pause here. When we come back, we'll talk about the Taconic Orogeny. This is one of the first events of mo uh, mountain building via these mobile belts uh, that are occurring, in this case, in the uh, Appalachian Mountains, or helping to initially build the Appalachian Mountains. And that's kind of the, the next big event in North America at this time. See you back here in just a second.